Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're taking a look at another in the Building a Cisco Lab series of videos. And today's lesson is going to take a look at making RJ45 to RJ45 rollover cables. Okay, and whereas most of my lessons are for a general audience, this is for a specific audience. In particular, this is for people that, who have a 2509RJ or 2511RJ in their lab and they're using it as an access server. Or they're looking at buying either one of those boxes as an access server. One of the advantages of these boxes is they provide either 8 for the 2509 or 16 for the 2511 dedicated async ports that are going to use just common RJ45 connections. This allows you to not have to go buy um, octal cables. And the other benefit of that is you can easily create your own RJ45 to RJ45 rollover cables. And that's what this lesson is going to cover. In order to make your own cables, you're going to need some things. Uh, first off, cable. <laughs> Pretty obvious. And there's actually three different resources you can use for this. You can either go and buy a spool of Cat5 or Cat6 cable. Uh, in the United States, generally you can find those at the big box hardware stores like Home Depot or something like that. They generally run about 70 bucks and up depending on the quality of the cable, I suppose. And that's the route I went. about a thousand foot spool of Cat 5e cable close to 10 years ago now and I've had it for that long. And a thousand feet is probably overkill, but I found plenty of uses for it. And the other routes that you can go, if you have a bunch of uh, Cisco rollover cables, the blue console cables, you can use those. The limitation with that is that you really have 16 of those guys hanging around and what length are they because you're going to want to be able to make these cables to the lengths that you want but if you got a couple of longer ones you may be able to get away with this they are pretty easy to convert into a rj45 to rj45 cables it does mean cutting up your console cables though and finally existing ethernet cables so if you have an ethernet cable you can easily cut that guy up and make rj45 to rj45 cables out of that honestly after doing a little bit of research after i started started this lesson, that's probably the route you want to go. When I bought the big ass spool of cable back in the day, it was because I was a cabling a house. I've done that twice now since I've moved. And also the fact that cables cost an arm and a leg. A hundred foot cable, hundred foot ethernet cable back in the day was probably about 80, 90 bucks or even you know more than that. And even cabling today for my job, we pay quite a bit for it, but I didn't realize this. You can go out on um, Amazon even, I'll show you a couple of pages out there where you can get 100 foot ethernet cables for a pittance. The benefit with that is that you're not going to have a thousand feet. You're not going to have a big ass box of cable that's going to be with you for a decade. And the shipping is going to be a whole lot less. If you don't have a brick and mortar store nearby, it sells Cat5 cable. I keep saying Cat5, you can use Cat6 as well. If it doesn't sell ethernet cable, this is a good way to go because the shipping is going to be a whole lot cheaper than getting a thousand foot of cable. Okay, I want you figured out which cable source you're going to use. You're going to need RJ45 modular plugs, uh, sometimes called jacks. And I would suggest getting like a bag of 30 or 100 or 50 or whatever. Get a bunch of those for a couple reasons. You're going to end up using a lot of these if you keep adding to your lab. You're going to want to make uh, crossover cables and other types of cables. And the other thing is, is that you want to have a few extras because you probably will screw up. Uh, we've all made cables that ended up not working or screwed them up in the process. So that way you have a little more room for error. And then a couple optional things. You can go get the cool color jack boots god that's a horrible name color jack boots that sounds like a uh, some type of gay fascist industrial group anyways those are those cool little quote-unquote snagless boots that you can put on there and the only reason you would really want those is for identifying the rollover cables so that you don't mix them up with your normal cables and the same thing the cheaper option is just to get some colored electrical tape and then finally the tools you're going to need you're going to need to buy a crimper they have a lot of these out on ebay that you can get for cheap it looks like most of them ship from china the one that's in the picture here i actually have that guy i got it years and years ago it was pretty expensive it was around 50 bucks it's really good it's heavy duty but you can get something probably in the 10 to 20 dollar range that'll work well for you and then a wire stripper or cutter um if you get a good crimper, it comes with a wire cutter, and you can actually use that as a stripper. I don't have a dedicated wire stripper. I generally just use scissors. Get away with it that way. You know, these things are fairly common. You can find them at almost any hardware store. Okay, and I'm out on Amazon.com. I'm based in the U.S., so this is going to be the U.S. version of it. But you can see if you search for Cat5 cable, you'll find long runs of cable. Now, this is already has ends on it. It's set up as a regular Ethernet cable. And as you can see, you can get it for fairly cheap. In this case, it's $5.21. I'm sure the shipping is going to be adding a little bit to that cost. And then here is a hundred foot of Cat5, Cat5e uh, cable for about 11 bucks. I like the uh, list price of $200. And that's really not that far off from what we pay for cables at work. If we have a 
hundred foot cable. I don't think it runs as much as two hundred dollars, but it's it's up there. Anyways, what you could do with this is you can buy in this case, say a hundred foot of cable, and then just use that as cable. You'll be cutting this guy up to make smaller runs that fit what you need. Finally, here they even have already made RJ45 to RJ45 rollover cables. So in this case, it'd be uh, 25 feet. Now, of course, you don't want one long 25 foot run, but you can cut this up and make rollover cables here. And the benefit to this, we'll discuss later when I talk about creating rollover cables from existing Cisco console cables, is that you don't have to worry too much about laying out your colored wires. It's already set up as rollover. You're just going to basically cut this and then pop on your, your RJ45 jacks and crimp it and you're good to go. So there are some cheap options out there. Go take a look at Amazon. I'm sure that you can find stuff on eBay or whatever. Whereas in the past, I would just say go out and get a uh, big ass box of cable because you'll use it over and over again. This is probably a better and cheaper way to go. So here's the pin out for a rollover cable. And a rollover cable is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Pin one will connect to pin eight on the other end. Pin two to seven, three to six. You can do the rest of that. Basically, whatever color you have on one end say on pin one you're going to want to have on pin eight on the other side so the pinout's pretty simple there's not a whole lot to it and the cool thing about this is you don't have to worry about the colors i've got colors listed here but these are not hard and fast you could set the colors in any order that you want as long as you do the same on the other end just the opposite so really as we'll see you splay it out arrange the colors the way you want it the same way on both ends and then when you you do one end and then on the other end you'll just either flip over the jack or the cabling itself so that you get the reverse order. So the pinout is really easy. So let's go through the steps. So first step you're going to do is you're going to get your cabling and you're going to cut it to the length that you want. You're going to want to go like an inch to two inches longer than the length that you desire. I wouldn't try and get too exact with these because this gives you a little bit of room for error. If you don't want to be making a, oh, a 2.375 inch, you know, rollover cable make it three inches, whatever. You want these to be tight, but you don't want them to be so tight that you can't move any gear at all. So anyways, like I said, cut it an inch or two inches longer than what you need. And then the second step is where you're gonna go ahead and you can see here, this is the outer plastic shielding. You're gonna go about an inch from the end of each cable and then cut around that. This is where you can use your wire stripper. I use just a pair of scissors for this. Generally, this outer covering is so thick that it's pretty hard to mess it up. You just take it and cut it around in a circle. You can actually use a steak knife. I've done that before too. Anyways, what you want to do is once you get this cut and remove the outer shielding, you want to check those inner wires, make sure that they're not nicked or cut. If they are, then just go ahead and go back another inch or so and, and do the same thing until you get a clean cut where you've just removed the outer protective plastic and you haven't damaged the interior colored wires. So you can see here, right here, um, and down here as well, some of this cabling comes with some threading inside it. I don't know if that's fiberglass. I'm not sure what that is. Anyways, you can just go ahead and clip it at the end here. Don't don't try and fish it out because you'll usually end up pulling out all your wires. Just cut it right at the end so it's out of your way. Okay, once you remove the outer protective plastic bit, you're going to have four pairs of twisted colored wires. Each pair is going to be a combination of a solid color and then a white wire with that solid color striped or dotted or sometimes it's just a line through there. So you'll have like orange and then what they call white orange, which is just a white wire that has an orange marking on it. And those guys will be together when you take a look at your cable. If you just got plain Jane out of the box, Cat5 cable. So then what you're going to want to do here is untwist those pairs and then flatten them out as much as you can and then lay them out. You can choose any order you want for the colors. It's not important in this case because all we're going to do is make sure that we do both sides the same way and then flip over that RJ45 jack. So the actual color code isn't that important because we're just going to flop it basically. So a couple things to watch out for is you can see here the white wires. They uh, sometimes aren't marked that well. You see there's a large length of a uh, wire here that's just pure white. And that's another reason why you want to give like an inch or so down so that you can actually see these because you can see here that if you cut it off up here you'd have a hard time telling the, the white orange from the white blue because it's not really marked that well anyways not a big deal but just so that you don't get to one side and forget you know what was next to what and like I said I generally lay these out with the solid color followed by the white plus solid color so here I did orange white orange oh that looks more red uh, blue white blue green white green and then you could barely see the brown in here and then white brown on the end if you're using the rubber boots those uh, colored rubber jack boots go ahead and slip that on now 
I've used those guys in the past and it, there's nothing more frustrating than getting done with your cabling and realizing that you forgot to put one of those guys on there. So go ahead and slide it on at this point. Okay, for this step, you're going to flatten out the wires as much as you can and straighten them out. Uh, they don't have to be too straight at the very end here. It's where you're going to cut that you really want these guys pretty closely grouped together and pretty straight. So what I will do is I'll actually go on the end here where you still have the productive productive we still have the protective uh, coating here and like squeeze that too to try and flatten out the wires within that shielding and that'll make these lie a whole lot flatter and then where you want to cut you want to take one of your RJ45 jacks and hold it up to your cabling and what you want to do is you want to make sure that the shielded part will go right past there's it's hard to see with these photos but there's like a little indentation here when you put your wire into your crimper it's going to push that down and that's actually going to pinch against the shielded part so you want that shielded part to come out a little bit past that and that's going to hold your wires in place so that they don't slide out of the jack line that up figure out about where this end of the uh, shielding goes and it should be like right around this area and then you know measure off basically from here you can cut a little short you don't have to get this exact because you can push this up a little bit further what you don't want to do is you don't want to leave it long because then it won't crimp there and you don't want to do it too short because if you have to push it all the way up in there and it doesn't hit these gold connectors it's not going to work there's still quite a bit of fudge factor there so don't worry too much about it one thing to keep in mind though and you know if you're doing your first end of the cabling it's not as big a deal because again in the rollovers it's just going the opposite of what you do on one end is going to be the pin out on the other end but watch out that you don't move the order of the cables i've done that too where i'm trying to keep this flat and you know the the brown slides under the uh, white brown and gets out of place you know keep a good eye on those again if this is your first end of the cable it's not that big a deal if you're doing your second end of the cable it will be a big deal because then you won't get your roll over and when you're cutting this try to make this as straight as possible I use scissors for this so it's not a huge problem for me to clip off like another small bit here you can actually make pretty small cuts here but make your cut see that they're straight it should be relatively straight it doesn't have to be again exact you want to push this in there and make those ends get as close to the end there as possible okay so this is probably the most difficult part you're going to slide your cabling into the rj45 jack and if you could see here there's actually little grooves that you'll slide these wires into and if you have this flat and you have them separated it's going to be fairly easy don't jam it in there don't push it in there hard just start sliding in there nice and easy i don't like where that's going anyways slide it in nice and easy make sure that they're getting into those grooves and then what i'll do is i'll generally like stop about halfway before i get pushed up in there make sure that they're in the grooves and then go ahead and push the rest of the way out so when you do have this fully inserted you can see down here that the shielded part does extend a little bit past where this crimper is going to be and that your wires are all within these guides make sure that no colors jumped and that they're in the same order that you want them to be and then the end of the wires will come up to the end of the jack here now it's not absolutely important that these be flush with the end of the jack you can push these up and pretty much make them as flush as possible but if you got one or two wires that are back a little ways don't worry about it because where the connection is actually going to be made is with these gold connectors when you crimp this those are actually going to go down and pierce the wire a little bit and that's where it's connecting to the wire and those gold connectors are where you're connecting to your switch or your pc or whatever you got this plugged into and if your cables get bent or out of order just pull it back out straighten them up again if you need to get some more room cut back on that shielding go through steps two three four again if you screw up here don't worry everybody's done it I've done it many times you just go ahead and cut off some more wire okay and here is the point of no return once you get that positioned in there and it looks good go ahead and put it into your crimper and crimp it what it's going to do is it's going to push down it's going to crimp that area where the shielded part is coming in so that the wire doesn't pull out of the jack and it's actually going to make those little gold connector plates go down and basically like an old school vampire tap touch the wire so that's where that connection is going to be made you don't have to put a ton of force on there as a matter of fact don't because what you'll end up doing is breaking that little tab that keeps it into the uh, ethernet slots so just you know simple steady pressure you don't have to go and uh, try and crush this thing into dust and there you go you have one end of your cabling done and what you're going to do is you want to make a visual inspection as you can see here you want to make sure that that shielded bit it has been crimped and that's what i was talking about the crimper actually pushes this down and keeps that wiring in place and here's the gold connectors you want to make sure that they're down and that they're actually hitting these wires here as well and then take a look at the top make sure your wires are in the order that you want them to be in and it should be good to go again for rollover cables if they did somehow get 
it out of order. Don't worry about it if this is the first end that you're doing. If it's the second end, you're going to have to make the rollover work. If this is the first end, don't worry about it. Just reorder your wires on end two. And if for whatever reason you've cut the cable too short or the wires aren't lining up or that tap isn't working or something looks goofy here, you could just go ahead and cut the cabling behind the jack, throw away that jack. There's really no good way to recover these once they've been crimped and then just do it again.